one way to guarantee to annoy and bore your reader is to info dump on them. Provide them every detail they could possibly need about the setting, your character's background, the magic system, and do it all at once. I used to do this with my own writing. I was so afraid that my reader would get lost in the story and not understand what was going on that I would just give them every detail they could possibly need about everything in the story so that they would have all the information before we really got into the story. And if I'm being honest, on top of that, if I had done a lot of research on a particular topic or I had worked really hard on a technology and a sci-fi story, then I wanted to make sure to get all of the details in there as well because I thought it was cool. The reader must think it's cool too. This info dumping was a huge mistake in my writing and it's something we see over and over with our students at StoryGrid University. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the three hacks I use to make sure I don't info dump on my reader and the one thing we should all be paying attention to when it comes to writing our stories. My name is Tim Grawl, I'm the CEO of StoryGrid and I'm the author of Running Down a Dream your first 1,000 copies, and The Threshing. My partner, Sean Coyne, is the creator and founder of StoryGrid, and he's a writer and editor with over 30 years of experience. First things first, unless you're writing a how-to book or a history book, your readers are not interested in the full history of the Borkhart C-93 pistol developed in 1893 by Hugo Bukart and is one of the first semi-automatic pistols created. They're also not interested in the finicky nature of the rare and endangered Lady Slippered Orchids, which requires extreme care and thought put to both their soil and light conditions, or the millions of other things that you and I are into. In fact, just me reading those out probably bored you a little bit and I risked losing some of you in this video because you're not interested in those things. Instead, here's what your reader constantly wants to know. This is the thing you should be focused on. This is what your reader wants to know. What happens next? This is the number one thing you should keep in mind. Everything you put on the page as much as humanly possible should be focused on just telling your reader what happens next, which leads to my first of three hacks on avoiding info dumping. Hack number one, Minimum Viable Exposition. Put the bare minimum on the page that the reader will need. Sean is always talking about how sophisticated readers are. So many of us and our readers have consumed so many stories through TV, books, movies, that they can keep up with the well-told story. They don't have to have every single detail of the world or the setting or the system. They just need to keep up with what's happening with the story. So give as little exposition as possible. Be quick to cut exposition. Whenever you're writing exposition, consider if it's really necessary for the reader to know this to keep reading the story and find out what happens next. Which leads to hack number two, just-in-time exposition. Wait until the reader is just about to need the information and then give it to them. This allows you to break up your exposition. It allows you to make sure you give them the details they need when they need it and not all of them up front when they'll probably skim it and forget it in the first place. And this also helps with hack number one because a lot of times what you'll find is the reader does not actually need to know the information. So if you give them just-in-time exposition where you're giving them what they need to know just before they need to know it, that ensures that you're actually putting stuff in there that the reader needs to know. And now we're on to hack number three, focus on Sam the single audience member. Sam is the one person that you're writing this book for and to. So if you focus on your single audience member, it will help you know what details need to go in the book and what details that you can leave out in the book. So if you're writing the book for a child, you're gonna put different details in than if the book is for an adult. You're gonna put different details in for a woman, versus a male. Now I have a whole video where I go into the single audience member and how that fits into the narrative device. So you can go down the description and click that link. But if you focus on one person that you're writing the book for, that will help you figure out what details need to go in and what details don't need to go in. So now let's look at an example from my own writing. So this is an excerpt from my upcoming book, the shithead and it hasn't been fully edited yet so bear with me here but I just want to show you a couple pieces that are important. A major plot point in my book is about the main character the protagonist Eric getting offered a job running a super pack. Now it first gets introduced in scene two and this is the information I put in there. You know what a super pack is Eric? Not really. It's a campaign finance thing right? 
That's right. It's basically a way to pull together a big pile of money from donors and spend it however we want to get someone elected. Ricky's campaign manager is an old friend of mine, and I've helped him here and there as he's worked his way through D.C. Now he's tapped me to run this super PAC to manage a big chunk of the online marketing. Only problem, I don't know shit about online marketing. So this abides by all three hacks for avoiding info dumping. All of the information that the reader currently needs is right here in these few lines. I do it just when the reader needs it. And I'm focused on my Sam, on my single audience member, because I am assuming my single audience member does not know anything about campaign finance law in the United States. So this is plenty to get me into the story and this major plot point where Eric is trying to get this job working for this super PAC. However, later in the story, my reader needs to know some more information about super PACs and how they run in order to understand what's coming in the story and all of the tension I'm going to build around this job. So if you jump forward to scene 11, I put a lot more information in here about super PACs, where they come from, and how they run. Now I will tell you, this whole section is less than 450 words. I pack in decades of campaign finance law in less than 450 words. I did a lot of research for this. I read a ton online. I read about case law. I called a good friend of mine who's a lawyer and is involved in campaign financing. I spent over an hour quizzing him, asking tons of questions about how super PACs work, what are the rules, what are the laws around them, and then I cut all of that down into less than 450 words, and I tried to write it where it's interesting, but at the same time, I was giving the bare minimum of information that the reader would need and I got in, gave the information, and I got out in less than 450 words. So in my entire book, where campaign finance law and super PACs are a major, major plot point, I got all of the information to the reader I needed them to have in order to understand what's going on in less than 500 words. Because I have learned that info dumping is a number one way to bore and annoy my reader. So I want to give them the bare minimum of exposition give it to them just when they need it, give just what they need to understand, and then keep going with the story so the reader finds out what happens next, what happens next, and what happens next. So take these three hacks, minimum viable exposition, just-in-time exposition, and focus on your single audience member. If you do this, it will ensure that you don't bore or annoy your reader and it'll keep them turning pages because they get to find out what happens next. Now, if you want to keep learning hacks and tips for your writing just like this, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you don't miss any of the videos that we put out here on the StoryGrid channel. Also, to get help with your own writing, we have tons of resources available at storygrid.com. We also offer one-on-one -on -one consultation. So if you're stuck with your writing, you can just go down in the link in the description, schedule a free consultation with us. We'll help you figure out where you're getting stuck and what you should do next. But either way, thanks so much for being a writer. Thanks for being a part of our community here at StoryGrid, and I'll see you next time.